Have you ever had the feeling that there's someone or something stood right behind you? Or when you turn to see who or what it is, there's nothing there? Well, if you say no, I just won't believe you. See, because we've all had that feeling sometime or other. The question is, why? Is it just a cold breeze passing through an open door? Or just a human instinct, something we all have? Or maybe, just maybe it's the spirit of someone or something. My name's Frank Humphreys and I'm about to take you on a journey in search of the truth. I'll be asking the question, do spirits really exist? See, in a world of uncertainty, you have doubt. And in a world of doubt, people question their belief. Now my question for you, ghosts. Are you a believer or are you a skeptic? Maybe you're undecided. Whatever your belief, stay with me as I, along with Third Eye Paranormal Investigation team member Anthony Keeling, invite you to join us on a paranormal experience of a lifetime. Joining us over the next six episodes, we have eight ordinary members of the public. Four skeptics versus four believers. During each episode, one guest from each side will battle it out against each other in their own personal quest to prove or disprove the existence of ghosts. A battle that's a short to consist of spine-chilling fear and sheer grit determination. Also joining us we have several guest mediums. Mediums who some say can contact our loved ones who have passed. Now me being a skeptic I don't believe there's any medium that can convince me that he or she can contact my loved ones who have passed. Am I wrong? Are you a believer and you think you can prove me wrong? Or are you on my side as a skeptic? If you'd like to join the Third Eye team on a future episode and fight your battle, then stay with us. Now before I introduce Team Believer Anthony Keeling, let me first welcome you to this evening's location, the Hack Green Secret Nuclear Bunker. Over 60 years ago, the freedom you now enjoy was in peril. World War II was being lost and Britain was struggling for its very survival. In 1941, Hack Green, a site previously used as a bombing decoy for the main railway station, a crew was given a new name of RAF Hack Green and decided to protect land between Liverpool and Birmingham from hostile attack. Following World War II, a major examination of the radar capability showed that the existing radar defence would be unable to cope with the possible threat from fast jet aircraft and nuclear missiles and a plan was drawn up to construct new bunkers across the UK. In 1958, Hack Green was given a new role, this time as part of the UK air traffic control for both military and civil aircraft, which was to last for more than seven years. This was to be Hack Green's final service as an RF station, and the site was closed in 1966. However, just 10 years later, the abandoned site was purchased from the MOD by the Home Office Emergency Planning Division at a cost report to be some £33 million and the original rotor radar bunker was converted into a vast underground complex containing its own generating plant, life support, emergency water supply and all the support services required to enable 135 civil servants and military personnel to survive a sustained nuclear attack. At the end of the Cold War, the WE-177 weapons system was decommissioned and the bunker was left to gather dust. Fortunately, Rodney Cyber came up with an idea that led to this vital piece of British history being saved for the nation to see. To date, thousands of public visitors have toured the bunker to see the ultra-secret weapons that only few of the UK's military commanders and defence staff have ever been privileged to see. What an absolutely fantastic building. Have you asked me certainly where to visit? Now joining me we have uh, team leader Anthony Keeling, so before we set off to surprise our guests, let's have a little chat with Anthony. Anthony's here with me now. Hello Anthony. Hi from. How are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Okay. First investigation? Yeah, really looking forward to it. Tell our viewers a little bit more about Anthony Keeling. How did you get involved with the paranormal? It all started for me when I was younger when I watched the film Poltergeist. Poltergeist the movie? Yeah, about three or four months I just could not sleep after watching that. It was something that 
I was just, I became really interested in. Okay, for you guys at home, uh, one of the reasons I got involved with the paranormal is, Anthony, uh, as we've spoken about before, yeah, is uh, back in 2007, myself and my wife, we lost a baby, and we decided to go and look and search at the paranormal to see whether, you know, our child was in spirit. Yeah. Um, after many investigations, myself and Julie, we just become torn apart. Uh, Julie became a believer, and I became a skeptic. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, we decided to create Third Eye Paranormal Investigations. We invited you along, and then, you know, the rest is history. Uh, we've now created a TV uh, documentary series with regard to um, bringing normal, uh, well, everyday people uh, on a paranormal investigation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this first episode is going to be exciting for me to see how our guests react for the oh, first yeah. episodes, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and then obviously as time goes by we have uh, different guests and, you know, tell me, the, the, how do you feel about that, having different I guests as each other? I think it's, it's good because you'll you'll get a quite a broad sort of spectrum of people and opinions, but that believer to become a sceptic or that sceptic to become a believer. believer. How do you feel about this place this evening? I think it's amazing. I think it, it's it's definitely got to feel the, the there is going to be activity. What do you think about to bring the medium along? Are they really talking to the spirit of the dead? As a skeptic, I've got to say no, they're not. What do you say as a believer? I think uh, mediums get a lot of flack, um, mainly because it's it's easy to, to dismiss what a medium is saying, whether it's something that's very general and vague that can apply to a number of people. Okay. But then that medium can come out with something quite specific to person, which is what's happened to me in the past. There's a lot of people, you know, viewers now watching this, who will go on paranormal investigations carrying EMF meters. What do these people use these EMF meters for? This is used for picking up that energy within any particular area, um, or whether there could be a spirit or any sort of paranormal energy. Okay, as a skeptic, <clears throat> as a skeptic, I have to say that uh, they're used by electricians to find electricity behind the wall. So for people to take them on a paranormal investigation, me as a skeptic, I don't think that works. I'm going to jump forward now. Okay. Tonight's investigation. Yep. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to proving this to the skeptics um, on the investigation and also out there watching us that goes to exist. And basically, I'm here to prove there is no such thing as spirits. Um, and I think the believers have got it wrong. Um, and ultimately, we will find out this evening on this investigation or sometime throughout uh, this series. Yeah. yeah. So, all I've got to say is uh, have a great investigation. Okay. Okay. And I will okay. speak to you later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No problem. Well, there we go. Anthony Keeling's opinion. You know, is this place paranormally active? Well, surely we will find out this evening. Now, it's time I went and visited our guests. They have not got a clue that we're coming for them. So, come on, let's go. Right, okay, we've just arrived at Esther Wade's home. Now, Esther Wade is our first skeptic of the series. She does not have a clue that we're outside the door. So, come on, let's go and give Esther the big surprise. You'll be very surprised to see us at the door. Hello. Esther Wade. Oh Esther Wade. Yes. Is that you? Yes. Third Eye Paranormal Investigations. Yes. How are you? <laughs> are you okay? You've actually been chosen to join us on a paranormal investigation. Excellent. You are our winning skeptic. If you want to get yourself sorted out right, yes. we've got quite literally 15 minutes. The location is not far. Yes. We'll explain to your husband where you're going to go to make sure you're in safe hands and then you can phone him as you when you arrive, okay? okay. You go and get yourself sorted, <laughs> Thanks, okay? Thanks, okay. Um, oh, superb. You want to sit in the back, Esther, yeah? Yes. You, you okay, mind your head? Okay, uh, superb, let's, uh, let's go. Destination on right. Okay, we've just arrived at our second guests. Uh, we've got uh, Kerry Robson. Well, Kerry's a big believer and she's going to battle it out tonight against Esther Wade. So let's go and get Kerry now. Okay, come on, let's go. Here we go, let's give Kerry a knock and see whether she's in there. This is TV. 
Reality TV. Is Kerry here? Kerry. Kerry Robson. Hiya. Third Eye Paranormal Investigations. Yeah. We have uh, chosen you to join us on a paranormal experience tonight. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> now. Got 10 minutes or so, yeah? Okay. Get yourself sorted and we'll take you to the location. Right, okay. Okay. Are we ready? Hi. Brilliant, okay. Is your mum okay? Yeah, she's okay. She's okay, mum's in safe hands, yeah? Okay, you can phone her any time you please. Let's go, come on then. Follow me this way, yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> okay, quite exciting. Yeah, all right at the moment. Um, it's a bit Nervous. eerie here. Nervous, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Very understandable, you know. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, no one can hear the screaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay. Uh, what we're going to do is I want to uh, talk about you girls now, yeah. Um, Esther, we'll start with yourself first of all, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about why you're a skeptic. Um, I've just never seen any proof. I'm quite interested in the subject and I watch a lot of programmes on television and things like that. I've never seen anything that's made me think, yeah, there's a point there. Maybe, it's to me, like I say, when you're dead, you're dead, you're just gone, that's it really. Okay, so when, you, when you're dead, you're dead, <laughs> I like that, when you're dead, you're dead. At the moment I'm doing modernity and the dark side, so we're actually talking about witches and ghosts and society's belief. That's okay, very interesting, so Kerry Robson, yes, uh, so Kerry, um, you've had some experiences as a big believer. Um, yeah, more so when I was little, um, the house that I grew up in was quite creepy and some things happened there and I was always told oh it's in your imagination and I've, I've never quite believed it, I've always thought no there's something else going on there. Have you ever felt spirit? Have you ever seen a spirit? I've never seen a spirit, I've certainly felt things and I've, um, I am a believer in I can you know talk myself into anything really. Well, most believers can talk themselves into <laughs> anything if you ask me, uh, but okay but who am I to say that yeah? <laughs> uh, so okay you say that you've you've had some noises, is that when you were young, young girl? Yeah I mean the house I grew up, like I said the house I grew up in, um, I always heard noises in that, that was a very noisy house. Um, one instance we had a, a stone wall and over the years I was living there a, a face seemed to grow in the wall as well, a, a prominent face came out of this stone wall and it wasn't there when I was first aware of, of right. what do you mean it actually stayed in the wall and it was it's, an imprint yeah, it was, forever it, it was imprint forever it actually came out two eyes and the mouth really stayed in the wall see they're, they're all mad <laughs> these believers they're all crazy but the other two guys in the head of shore tell me off for saying that what I'm going to ask you ladies to do is walk inside the other team members are inside now they'll meet you and they will uh, take you around the building this investigation is for members of the public to do battle against each other under the guidance of the Third Eye Paranormal Investigation Team. Now before we see what the guests think of tonight's location, let's see what spirits they may encounter this evening. Here in the main museum, staff have reported seeing a tall dark figure stood in this doorway. The figure is said to be that of a man, but no one can quite understand why he's there. Staff who've seen him say he seems to be peering into the room as if looking for someone. The nuclear fallout shelter. This is a very unusual room. You could say a room of two halves. The left half seems to fill people with joy and happiness, whereas the right half seems to make people feel miserable with a sense of despair. Everyone who's been affected by the room say the moment they leave, they feel fine. The Commissioner's Room Although nothing much paranormal is reported in this room, there was one occasion where a visitor claimed to hear a breath as if someone was stood right behind them. The Theatre If I was to describe this room in two words, then words would be very frightening. Staff who work at the bunker say the theatre is not a very nice place to be on your own. Curator Lucy Cyber told the team about the time she was scared half to death. Why? Well, when she was sat in this seat, she claims to have heard a very distinctive deep breath right behind her. The lower corridor. On many occasions, staff reported seeing the spirit of a man dressed in military uniform. Staff have named him the commanding officer. He has been seen walking along this corridor towards these doors. Doors which have also been heard rattling for no apparent reason. On the opposite side of the doors is the yellow staircase, where there has been reported sightings of a spirit. The spirit is said to be that of a lady in her late 20s, dressed in a dark blue, 
or grey uniform. Hearing the ladies dormitory, nothing much has been reported. However, on some occasions, people say they've heard what they can only describe as a giggling or a low laughing. And just recently, staff say the room seems to be very unpleasant. Tall, dark figures, a room filled with mixed emotions, breaths, dark growls, spirits dressed in military uniform, a female spirit, and other strange sounds. And what will our guests have to say at the end of tonight's investigation at the Hack Green secret nuclear bunker? Yeah, you're going to be nervous at first, but then if you gather yourself together, it's obvious, you know. Okay. I think any sudden jolt, any sudden bump, it's natural, your body's natural defence is to pump the adrenaline. So you're going to feel it's just down to you to control it and then you can rationalise what it is. Obviously, your body will naturally react to different things, but if it's justified, I mean, it's, you know, you're not going to make something up if you hear something and your body reacts to it. You, our body's obviously reacting for a reason. How are you feeling now? Seeing it that you're sort of I'm, I'm having a touching and feeling the walls. I just want to see if there's any damp or there's anything. So why would that be? In case anything drips on me. Over to you, Kerry. I just, I find myself looking at the chairs. A bit weird, right. like, I don't know, why there's no explanation for it. You've gone cold again. Gone cold again from walking to the door and now really like instant drop again. You wouldn't fancy doing a lone vigil? I think um, be uneasy about it, definitely. Being in a darkened room on your own, you, you, you're going to feel uneasy because that's how we're made, we're human. But as in, am I scared? Do I think that I'm going to be affected? Paranormally, then no, I wouldn't mind. I felt quite happily sit in any room in the dark, and I'm absolutely fine. But I think I would feel uneasy about being in this specific room. Why would you say that Kerry's feeling different in each of the, the rooms, and you're not? I don't know. It's a personal thing. It's a personal journey. Okay. Um, Maybe she wants to feel that way. What would you say to that? Well, it, it's not a wanting to believe in the paranormal. It's it's just something that I, I do believe in because I genuinely think it's out there. How do you feel in this room now? A little bit uneasy in here. I'm just wondering whether you feel uncomfortable when there's like dummies in the bed and that. Do you think that has an effect on how you I can see that dummy though and I don't feel... It's because it's like eyes watching and such, you know, things watching me. Do you think that might be part of the, the feeling? No, because I don't feel uneasy about what's going on over there. I feel, to be honest, a bit more behind me. Not okay. feeling any of that? No, no, nothing. Do you feel like anybody could have ever died in this room at all? I don't get that vibe. I don't know if it's a feeling that someone's died in here, but it's something perhaps not nice has gone on in here. Before we meet this evening's medium, let's see what happened earlier when I spoke to some of the locals about ghosts. Carol, do you believe in spirits, ghosts or...? Uh, it depends, I'm a bit sceptic. Have yeah. you ever had a, an experience? No. no. Right, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, is it something that you would like to have an experience No, I don't on? think I would. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. What about you, Ron? I don't you... believe in ghosts, but uh, I think the spookiest thing that I've ever had was mm. both my parents died on the same day, okay. uh, I think six, seven years apart. Oh, goodness. Oh, the same minute. Oh. That's the only same minute. Same minute. It's really, really strange, but I still don't believe in ghosts. Ian, do you believe in ghosts? A little bit. I'm not convinced, but uh, a little bit, yeah. I do I do get scared uh, sometimes. Have you had a, ever had an experience that makes no, you... No, never, never have. No, never had an experience. Okay. So, so what makes you believe then? Have you, have you ever had any kind I, of experience? I don't know. I don't know. Just, I don't know. I think there's something other out there than, than we know about. I don't think we can explain everything. What well, do you think it's 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 paranormal and twenty percent or so, I believe. Okay. And um, what about yourself, Katie? Um you... I think I believe there's something out there but I've never had any experience of anything but there's something that's a bit spooky. Hello Hello Medium James Business. How are you doing? Are you How okay? are you, James? I'm okay, thanks. Okay, oh, really nice to see you, mate. We're going to do another long street for, I'll tell you what, let's have a little chat here, yeah. Okay. Um, James Griffiths. Yeah. Who is James Griffiths? I'm glad you're asking. Uh, I am a spiritualist medium and a paranormal investigator. I've been working as a medium for oh, about 15 years. Okay. 
I've done hundreds of investigations all over the world. Have you been to the Hacker Green Bunker? No, I haven't. You have members of the public who say mediums are fake, they're full of, basically full of crap. Would you say you're tarting with the same brush? Well, obviously, I'm tarting with the same brush uh, because, you know, you work in the media. There's a lot of media mediums that have been sort of I don't know, brought out as being fake. As a team, we had the discussion about uh, various different devices that are used by groups. What do you personally think about dowsing rods with regards to um, paranormal investigations? I've done dowsing rod workshops and uh, you know, for some people they work, for some people they don't work. Some people use them every day answering questions, dowsing yeah. crystals as well. As soon as I came into the building, I was picking up a gentleman and uh, right at the front door when we were talking and it seems that he's coming through and it seems that he's walking around you know walking around the whole place i keep hearing my name being said that brings me to the question is do you have a name for him well i'm i keep hearing james 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 but that's me so i don't know if he's talking to me but i'm him james james i've been shown a room that is yellow just let me stop you there right just as i've gone to walk through that door i've just got a terrible stabbing sensation right here twice like a a really sharp one and then a light one. It could well be, could well be spirit, but this area here is heavy. Just in this area here is heavy. Just this so doorway here. That in the doorway. So you know, there's, if this is a protected area, or it was a protected area, yeah. there could have been somebody looking after it. There could be a military gentleman outside, you know, a man of the army, okay. protecting the. So you had to go through this person. So this, the energy here, there's a lady presence in here. This definitely feels like I was young, young lady. Uh, yeah. It feels to me, it's, what I'm guessing is somebody, I want to say somebody thin. So from that area, we're normally thin, but I'm getting somebody thin. I'm getting somebody which looks like she's got blonde hair. On the top of that stairs then while we're waiting to go in, I heard the name given to me, which is Grace. There seems to be just one person in here. There seems to be an energy. Um, um, uh, yeah, and it, and it feels like a male energy. Okay. And it feels, uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's strong, but it feels confident. I feel sick. I've got, I feel, I feel like I've got, I know this is not nice, but I've got, I feel like a sicky taste in my okay. mouth. The person that is sitting, and I want to go on this side here. Yeah. Uh, and funny enough, I don't want to put my hand in as well. So, uh, okay. but I do want to go on this side. But so, I, so you're saying you don't want to put your hand in? Why do you feel that's a, a, it's a bad thing? I just feel like I don't want to put my hand in because it just feels as though the, it's quite... Dense. There's somebody just gone past that way there. Okay. There's somebody just went. And if I turn around and said, <laughs> this is going to sound weird. If I turn around and said they had red boots on, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why I've been shown boots and whatever, okay. uh, but they have red boots on. I feel it's going to be a lot more active as the night goes on. What I'm picking up is people coming out of the walls sort of thing. They're coming out of the walls. They basically, we've seen bits and pieces of them. And as the night goes, they're just looking and interested at the moment. I feel as though we're going to hear a lot of footsteps a lot of running around and there's going to be a lot of, you know, you were talking about your stomach, there's going to be yeah. a lot of pain picked up. We're at the, the theatre, okay, um, and I've been told by some of the staff in here that it could be the theatre of doom. What it is with doom, it just feels dismal and depressing to me. Uh, and it just feels as though, you know, I'm going in there to listen to something that I don't want to listen to. Right from the very beginning, there's a man within the whole of this building, and I'm picking up this man. This man seems to have some sort of problem with his head. I feel like I'm walking through smoke. It's interesting that I've seen the yellow room, and now we're in the yellow room. I want to be uh, lying on the floor. You know, there's somebody here, there's, again, it's a male. What's he doing? Is he picking someone up? He seems like he's picking himself up. There's something like a negative, uh, energy or negative spirit. Some of the ladies that have been here are going to feel a bit not happy about being here, yeah. being a bit pushed around. One strange bit of information was when you said that you felt like there was body parts in the walls. There the was arms there. coming out of walls. I did say to you about arms, but I was also drawn outside of the building. There's some sort of historical burial, burial ground outside. Yes and no. Do you have a spirit guide? Uh, I do, yes. I want to say is thank you very much. Okay. And nice to speak to you, and no doubt we'll speak to you again in the future. Okay, what I tend to do is use a white light protection. So, what I want you to do is close your eyes and imagine you have a white light above your head. Feel this light come down your body, down your arms, down to your hands, down across your stomach, your lower back, your hips, your thighs, straight down your legs to the floor. And that's it, man, just relax. Can you walk towards us, please? What's up there? 
do something again. Can you do that again for me? If there's somebody near me. Show yourself. I do believe there is stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? It will be dead to silence so you know that the sounds that you're getting have to come from somewhere. What was that? Did anybody hear that? Seems to be something up there though. I don't know. Are these events running across the top, is there? Are they events, yeah? Yeah. There's a gentleman that roams through this building. Can you show yourself to us, please? I hope, hope. Definite hope. Down the back of Kerry. Where Kerry is? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel anything? You feel okay? Yeah, I feel alright at the moment. If there's anybody here with us, you make some sort of noise. What was that? It was a shot. Shh, shh. If that was you, can you not loud before us, please? Five minutes in, how are you feeling? Quite calm, um, just quite relaxed at the moment. Kerry, are you saying you've got a pain in your side? Yeah, just, um, it's just since I've been over here really, I'm just sort of in my ribs on the sides. It's, just when I breathe in and it's sort of coming and going. Yeah, a bit like sharp. sharp. Yeah, yeah, I sharp. had that same, now I had that same pain before, um, so this is very strange. Mm -hmm. um, and. I'm not sure what that is. I'm really, I really uh, find that to be very strange. Yours seems to be on the opposite side. My, my, mine was on my right hand mine's side. On my left, you seem so to be on your just left. Just like under my ribs, on my left, just when I breathe in. Interesting, because that's exactly the same with me, but on the opposite side. Mm. Esther, how do you feel about that doorway over there? Um, your honest opinion? Do you just be. It's, it's dark. I can't see in there. Right. Um, so if naturally, you were, I want to. You know, I, I want to keep it in my sight because I yeah, can't see it. Yeah, because me. that's your human instinct, you yeah, see. Yeah, If you were a believer and I said that to you, nine times out of ten... Whereas uh, the believer would say, I feel uncomfortable here. Um, and they really do genuinely believe that that's, that's a, a, a spirit. Um, I had something fast as it could move diagonally across the screen then. Kerry. We've been in here now for 10 minutes, yeah? There doesn't seem to be nothing happening here. Is the What do you think? Why do you think that is? Well, have you got any explanation? Um, oh, we've only just started at the moment. I've got this pain going on in my side, so that's come on only since I've come in here. Yeah. So I don't know what that's about. So I don't know what that's about. What was that? What was that? I heard that. Where was that from, Kerry? Uh, in that direction. That sounded like it came from over your direction where you are. Yeah, it sounds like it came from here, behind that barrier. No, I, I heard it. it was like a knock, it was like a little one, two, three, sort of. Okay, so, so yeah, go on, you were saying, anyway. Um. You, so you're paying your side, yeah? Uh, yeah, I think there's something going on in this room. It's not really right. strong at the moment, but, I mean, we've both had the same sensation. Sensation, yeah. Mine was earlier on, but you seem to have it now when... Yeah, li when, when I came into this corner, I was fine over there, obviously, and then it's just... And it's not sort of... Continues it sort of just every sort of few breaths I get. Kerry? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. All right. If you're in pain at all, anything that's, you know, I can't say, uh, establish how much pain you're in. If you are in serious pain or anything like that, mm -hmm. let us know. Okay. Okay. Uh, same as yourself, Esther, if you feel uncomfortable at any stage, yeah? Yeah. Let us know, okay. yeah. Esther and Kerry swap places, yeah? Swap places, yeah? There was another click over in that corner again. Right, okay, if that's you, you will do a little bit better than that to convince me that you're in here. I'm there. We don't believe you exist. We'd like you to make some kind of sound for us. A real distinctive sound. Tap on a piece of metal for us. That was sort of over there again. That was like a scream. I actually feel like there's something right stood next to me. If there's somebody near me, make some sort of noise on the glass next to me. 
Can you run across the floor for me, please? <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Esther's just yeah. nearly jumped out of a coat. <laughs> <In fact, laughs> Esther's gone on a coat still. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's a silhouette of Esther there because Esther's just left the building. <laughs> <laughs> There's the spirit of a female. Can you make a loud sound for us, please? Did you get that? I think I heard a knock. Okay, Esther, that seems to come from your direction. Esther. Um, I, uh, I didn't hear you. Can you do that again for me? Where's that coming from? Right down the corridor, you got that corridor. Nice, right, okay. Is that you? If there's a female here on the lower level with us now, can you make a sound for us, please? Is there a female here with us now? Right, what was that noise then? Eh? I didn't hear that. Shh, shh, shh. I heard what sound like that. That's water. That's up there. Okay, sure. Really okay. Can you walk towards us, please? Is that you? Walk towards us now, please. Are you there? Where was that? Was down there. That was down behind you. That was was that was that behind uh, Kerry? Yeah. Hello. I don't think there's been anything that's definite, anything that's actually made me think, hmm, maybe. So I'm still a skeptic at the moment, guys. Ever since we went into that first room, yeah. I've had this pain in my side, and it, it came on quite suddenly. Why do you think you haven't felt that yourself, uh, Esther? Because I don't, I, I don't think there's anything to. So I've, I've said before, once you're dead, you're dead. It's spooky because it's dark and it, everybody does, but once you get used to the dark, it's not too bad at all. You've got energy. It's not very often you have energy like this. Right, to tell me that was your stomach, Kelly. I think it was my stomach. Okay. <laughs> 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 no. Not if it was okay. before. Yeah, right, okay. Well, let's just check. If that was you made that sound, can you do it again, please? Right, I'm going to have to shut the field and say, George, are you in here with us, George? I think I was starting to say before, I have that feeling like I've been on the boat and I've come back on land, yet I can still feel the movement. Okay, so you got like a, a swaying sensation, yeah. are you saying? Is that you making Anthony feel that way? Anthony, you look miserable. I just... You do, you look, you look as though you're there, then you look like you're about to jump off your chair. I just feel... You look... Sway. Right, okay. How do you feel, um, the... I, f I feel um, alright. Kenny, sorry. Yeah. Do you, you feel okay there, yeah? yeah. Is it, what about the pain in your side? Oh, I've still got that. It's sort of coming and going every few breaths, but other than that, I feel okay. That's their shop seats with Kerry. Um, um, how do you feel? I don't feel as bad, but I'm still feeling that sway. Do you? Yeah. Not as bad. Okay. Is there a George in the room with us now, please? What was that? What was that? What was that? Because that's not your stomach, because that come from behind me. Is that you making these sounds? Are you trying to communicate with us? Can you do something else, please? Move the chair. Right. Right. 
Right. Oh, what was that? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought that was right here in this seat. Has that you heard anything? No. Right, it's okay. But I'm going to be really honest with you, love, right? I don't lie. And I heard that sound. And that sounded like your stomach sounded before. Mm-hmm. But that came from here. And it did sound like a... Mm-hmm. I heard that again. So it's not... Are you here? I have to say, mate, yeah, there's been a couple of noises in here, but as far as I'm concerned, there's a gap there. There's nothing going on. It really bugs me. We expect everything to happen from the get-go like that. And in my opinion, it takes time for energy to build up, for the night to go on, and it doesn't just happen like that. I'm just wondering whether you mistaken energy for adrenaline. Does it take... All night for you, adrenaline. Adrenaline doesn't build up. Adrenaline no, like, uh, Actually, adrenaline lasts for up to six hours in your body. But so it, if you keep having short, sharp though. shocks, you're going to have a build up. Of... Yeah, it builds up, but it's, it's an instant thing. But you get you an, an adrenaline rush. It's there. It's, it doesn't take time to build up. Esther, anything going on there that has convinced you so far? Has anything going on? Nothing convinced me that's done I will admit that the we did hear water at one point. Um, I couldn't work out whether it was a flushing or something like that. But um, even that hasn't really given it. There's nothing. Okay, you had the very sharp pain in your side, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Now that occurred in what room was it? Down in, in the museum. Yeah, the Lucy Museum. That was literally, I was fine, and then um, I went and took a position up in one of the corners, and it was while I was standing there, and it was quite sharp stabbing pain and it was just as I was taking breaths in every few breaths. Do you put that down to paranormal or could you say that's an active feeling that you've, you've felt? You never know but I just think it's very strange that it occurred. I was absolutely fine and then it was when I went into that room when I took a position in that corner and it started happening then. Right. How do you feel in the shelter? Um, like I said, it wasn't a dizzy feeling, it was more, it was that feeling like sort of rock just moving about. Myself personally, I don't believe that this is a paranormal anything that we've experienced down here. I think we're getting little taps, raps, um, sensations that Kelly's getting. Uh, and this is all about you guys trying to convince me, trying to convince us that, that what we're experiencing is paranormal. We're trying to convince the viewers at home that it's not paranormal. And to be honest with you, after them first vigilance, we've been down there one hour. And there's been absolutely nothing. You sceptics, you expect everything just like that. Nothing that has, that has happened is a, a tiny bit convincing. Nothing that has happened has made me think I'm wrong. If there's a spirit of a gentleman in this area, you need to make some kind of sound. Now, if you're a spirit, I'm getting a bit fed up. I don't believe you're here at all. I feel like I'm talking to myself. And I'm sure the rest of us are too. If you want to prove us wrong, then you have to do something for us now, please. If there's any spirits in this area at all, can you reveal yourself to us now, please? Can you please make a noise? I was in here a bit ago and I heard some thuds. Could you do that again? Thuds. Could you do that again? That was loud. Thuds, was it? Okay, continue, Kelly. Sorry. Could you do that again, please? Make a thud. Or if you just used your voice, could you do that again now? I can hear something there. Wait. Wait. Okay, you've almost got me. You've um, made me think that I've heard something. So can you just give me something a bit more? Can you do this again? Can you whistle? Oh, I've got a puck. What you got? 
A whistle back, I'm not Wait, lying. Go in there. I'm not lying, I'm not lying. Can you try copying that again? <laughs> If there's a spirit of a gentleman in this area, you need to make some kind of sound. Was it me? Was that you? Can you do it again, please? I'm going to go through some names. If you are here, can you let us know, please? Is there a Barbara here with us now? Is there a Georgina here? I don't, I don't, I don't know why, I've just, it's just popped into me at the name Joshua. Is there a Joshua here? Can you tap twice if your name is Joshua? The media picked up the name James, he kept saying James, James, and he wasn't sure whether there was a spirit calling him, or whether that was the name of the spirit. In one way, I'm sick of having to prove myself to you. To me, or in to, a way. To, well, to just to, well to, to, to skeptics, to people. I just get mm. that feeling, like I'm just. These have been people living a life, so speak to them like people. Do you agree with that, Esther? Um, well, I, I, I don't think there's anything here. Okay, if, 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 Anthony's, if what Anthony's saying is basically that... Is don't demand, are you saying? Don't command that. We yeah, do, you know, talk to us, let, let us, you know... Yeah, okay. Respect. You have genuine mediums that walk around buildings, they can go to locations and they pick up on names. If they weren't people, how can they have names? I don't know a genuine but medium from a non-genuine medium. Any trade in the world, you will have cowboys, you will have charlatans. Before I come down, I wrote down a couple of names that I thought would be pulled out. George was one of them, but George is the name of the period. George is a is a perfectly common name. I picked George. Why do you both keep saying George? I don't know why the both of you keep mentioning the name George. I know George come into the conversation. There's just been a light just float right past your head into that doorway, just as I said that. George, is there a George here? Have I just mentioned the name, George? And if you just show me your light in that doorway? If that was you, show us again. Show us your light now, please. Are you here with us, George? If there's a spirit in this room, can you lift up a seat? Lift up one of these seats. In this room, can you lift up a seat? Right, it's okay. I'm not put in this room, but I was going to go out the quiet. I've got this camera and the girls here, and I'm getting non stop. Bulbs. This room is very dusty, as I've been led to believe by one of the staff that were here. The lady did mention that if you're going to move about in here. Another one is your talk. Right, can you ask uh, for direction? Yep. Yeah. If there's somebody here with us, can you move from the bottom of my screen to the top of the screen? Yep. Yeah. It's gone all. I want everybody to do this now, right? Just a little experiment, right? I want everybody to be deadly silent. Anthony, I want you to pause your camera. Okay, have you done it? Kerry, we've just switched the cameras off, yeah? And I said that I had the sensation of something coming into the room. How did you feel when, when I said uh, there was something in the room with us? Um. Very unnerving. Okay. Esther, how did you feel when I said there was something coming through the door? I thought, how do you know? You don't believe. You're a sceptic. You've just proved how easy it is to build an atmosphere. Yeah. But just because you can do that, anybody can manipulate a situation. But right. at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that these things aren't real and can't happen. Right, okay. Why has it not happened already? When I was talking before and I was saying what I was saying, did you not feel uncomfortable with what I was saying? I was a little bit unnerved, but I don't, I didn't feel, relate to anything that you were saying. 
Okay. It make so, you feel it. Okay. So it, it right. So basically, what you're saying is that you don't think there's anything in this room. I don't think there's anything. I think there's something going on outside the room in the corridor. Okay. So if I leave you in here now with the camera, and you do a, a long vigil, uh -huh. yeah. Um, are you going to be okay with that? Um, I'm sure I will be. You will be. Okay, because that's not going to be the case. Because we're actually going to leave Esther in here. I hate you Okay, so Esther, basically what you're going to do is you're going to prove to these believers that this is all tricks in their mind because there is no spirit in here. And everybody felt on edge through the story that they've just heard. I seem to remember I have said in the past that spirits were people they're not performing monkeys. Is it not the believers, if I'm right, Esther, that are around looking for these spirits to act like monkeys? Is it not the believers that are going from location to location saying, can you do this for me, can you do proof, that for me? Proof, no, proof to me that you exist. It's just the sceptics are expecting everything to happen. The believers are asking for things no, to happen. No, I'm asking you to prove to me that what you're thinking, you're experiencing is paranormal. There's a spirit of a gentleman who stood by any of the doorways. Come in. We're inviting you in here to prove to us that you exist. Is there anybody here? Maybe bang, tap. I have to admit, I am getting a bit nervous, but that's been done on my own. Um, it is quite dark when you walk up those stairs over there there's a certain point where it feels like there's a cut off and it's from warm to suddenly cold and it's the second turn in the stairs that it just changes there's a lot of banking going ahead I'm not sure what that is Are you here with us now? Are you in the room? Move something in the room. Would you like to make a noise, maybe? A bang, a rap? What's that? You're looking quite on edge, Harry. Yeah, I feel like there's something behind me. In, in that corridor? In, in just sort of round the corridor. It's actually making me feel a bit emotional. I'm standing in the corner of the room now. And above me is a bit of a gap. As you can see out there, it's absolutely pitch back. So I'm just going to... So you can turn around there so you can see a bit. And okay. Okay, I'm gonna try a different name. Arthur. Would you like to come and talk to me? Or is there anybody here that would like to bang or whew? Someone clicked out here then. Can you talk to me? Or maybe knock? Would you like to? Help me to understand or believe. Sure, chance really here to have an impression on someone and walk away thinking, yeah, you know, it's very could possibly. Okay, I blew. Okay, I heard some noises. But there is a chair up there. Did you hear that? That sounded like a chair or something. I think there's something else here. Uh, 
What was what was that? That was like something was being wheeled. If this is for me, tap twice. You felt uncomfortable here, didn't this you? This we've just had in this room. I've been standing here banging behind me from this corridor. It actually made me feel really emotional. Really? I hate it. feels horrible. Thank you. That was behind me. Was that behind you? Well, it was sort of like down the corridor. You go there. I thought there was someone coming down. It sounds like, but it sounds like there's someone's got heels on. And I don't think is any. That, so is that a member of the crew? Well, none of the crew have got heels on, have they? They've all got comfy shoes on, and that's that's heels. Is it disgusting down here? That was heels walking. Can you do that again? It was. Is there anyone walking outside? A female, female officer or female worker <laughs> patrolling the corridor? What have you got my rear for? Go back over there. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. Go back over there. <laughs> Go and stand back. I don't know why. Go, <laughs> go and stand back over there. Go on, one more time. One more time. That was that was um If there is anybody out in the corridor, please let me know. Would you like some help? Could you do that again for me, please? If you would like, if you if you would like some help, make make another knock. Doing this for the believers. I really, really want to get that proof, that evidence that there is life after death. I'd love to prove the sceptics wrong. If there is someone here with me, can you show yourself on the camera? Something definitely, definitely tapped on my shoulder then. I don't know whether the camera, have you picked that up? What have we... This... Right, now I am going to... Go down this end. And film down there, because there's definitely something... It's just me and you in here now. So if you can do something... To show me that I'm not alone... Please do it now. 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 As far as I'm concerned this evening, there hasn't been anything that's gone on in this location. Seems to be a lot of arguing amongst the team and the guests, but that's about all really. I really do want to prove all the doubters. Give us that one thing, that one thing that is going to give us that evidence. Oh. If that was you, James, that was a great all. Thank you very much. Please, 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 can you do that again? I'm not demanding. I'm asking out of respect. I know you exist. I want others to know that you exist. 
James, please will you show yourself? Yes, thank you. If you just can do something for us before we go, so we can show people that you're here, and people can respect that. You don't really want people to think that you don't exist. It would mean more to you if people were aware that you are here. So do something to prove that. If I knock once, can you do it again? If that was you, can you do it again now? It seems to be that every location that we go to, there's always an explanation for what's going on. Now, I've been calling out at various times throughout the night and it just doesn't seem to be anything going on at all. Grace, if that was you, Grace, will you knock again? Come on, I would be so grateful. Just that one thing, one thing. Use my energy. Show yourself, make some sort of noise. Tap on the glass. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. Oh, right, we're getting somewhere. I do believe there is stuff here. I just don't think there's an awful lot of activity going on in this room. Experienced activity in other rooms. And I did experience a sensation in this room earlier. This is reported to be one of the most haunted locations in the UK. Now unless these spirits seem to be sitting and watching us, and that's all they're doing, then it just makes my case stronger. And the same for that of the skeptics all across the country. And Esther, our guest skeptic tonight. Right, there's definite, definite. We're getting somewhere. Thank you very much. Thank you. It feels like it's building and building. I have confidence that we can do this, that we can win this one. This is one for the believers. And. Yeah. Come through here, Ant. Just come through now, Ant. Yeah. 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 In in the way. In you know the room that you said it go in. Yeah. I was getting a lot of taps on the glass and orbs. Do you think that there's paranormal stuff going on here tonight? Yes. Yeah. So you really genuinely believe that? I, I still believe as much as when I arrived. There's been bits happened, maybe not as to what a sceptic would want. I think there has been stuff going on tonight, definitely paranormal activity. I still believe. I've felt some sensations, I've heard some noises, um, some things that can't be explained, so it's still in my mind. You're still a big believer, of course. Yeah, it's been an enjoyable night, but... As for paranormal activity, I'm not convinced. What you're basically saying is that you are still a sceptic. Yeah.